Since the coronavirus hit and live income has been crossed out for many musicians, I keep seeing more and more people asking about how to do Patreon right. Now, while this channel is mostly about how to build from zero to 10,000 fans, if you do already have a somewhat established fan base and some devoted fans who may support you, I find Patreon to be one of the ways that with minimal financial investment, you can get some income going while doing very minimal effort that really helps bonding with fans. While Patreon has been around for around seven years and has become a way many creators create steady income, musicians are often clueless on how to do it effectively. So in this video, I want to talk about how you do Patreon effectively. Hi, I'm Jesse Cannon, a music marketing nerd and record producer, mixing and mastering engineer, and this is Museformation. So when you look at a list of the top creators in music on Patreon, you see a lot of people doing different things. But I want to talk about what people who see themselves as musicians first are doing that is effective so that you can think about what you can do yourself there. One of the most important things for every creator is to have a $1 tier in order to allow fans to support you even if they don't have much money. Some acts like Circus Survive use this as a $12 per year access to a fan Discord chat room since this costs nothing to do but gives an incentive to the fan more than just leaving a tip and allows their community to grow while getting some income. The main level most people target to get fans to invest at is the $5 a month level, which will often give first access to tickets, merch sale codes, early access to new songs and music videos. Upper tiers on Patreon are usually $10 to $25, and they give access to everything from stems, playthroughs, and depending on what an audience may respond to, as well as putting the names of the patrons in the credits of videos or an album. Some people with more rabid fan bases charge $50 to $200 to do custom messages or songs for fans. While these high-priced items can feel off-putting, I do think in this day and age where musicians are horribly compensated for their work, the idea of allowing your more financially endowed fans to give you a good payday for a little effort can be very helpful. Really, though, the key to what you should do on Patreon is to look at what fans want more of. The group Spirit Box saw that fans really responded to their live stream chats, so when COVID hit, they started a Patreon and put those live stream chats behind the paywall of Patreon. Look at what your fans want from you and figure out how to structure them in tiers. Everyone is still figuring out how to make this work. The last thing I will leave you with is an inside look at one of the best Patreons I've seen, which is for the artist Kevin Devine. So I did this music business podcast for a lot of years with the co-host was Zach Cirillo. We were one of the first music business tech discussion podcasts and definitely the only one in the punk indie sphere when we started in 2014. He's managed groups like Brand New, Knuckle Puck, and now works with artists like Cave Town and Chloe Moriando, and of course, Kevin Devine. We decided to do a reunion episode recently and talk like we used to talk. One of the things we discussed in this recent reunion episode was the Patreon he runs for Kevin Devine. So to round off this short episode, I'm going to play the details on that so you can learn some really good lessons on how to run an amazing musician Patreon. I'm curious, you had Patreon on here. I'm curious what your thoughts are on that. I, very briefly, very for until from January 1st of 2015 to the day we shut this podcast down, originally I had a Patreon. Oh, that's right, uh, you that did. Sort of, and I liked the model back then. I found it interesting back then. And I, I paid for a Patreon for a podcast that I'm a fan of. As do I. But we decided to launch a Patreon for Kevin Devine right after coronavirus. We kind of waited a few weeks and launched it on April first and it's been a shocking success we have like just under 500 patrons that pay between probably an average of i don't know 12 13 dollars a month i would guess and it's been an incredible project like it's kind of been i mean i, I tell whitney the day-to-day -day manager i work with like it's been the most valuable thing we will do for any artist we work with this year because kevin you know relies on touring he has a child he has a family you know it's like he doesn't live with his parents you know <laughs> We had to go to, you know, we had to replace the vast majority of someone's income in two week notice and it's really worked and we treat it very seriously. You know, we have full branding for it. That's right. Customize it. A designer, Matt, I work with has handled and we have this calendar where we do like, you know, every, oh yes, well, we should say Jesse is involved in this too, actually. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mix and master them. So I know the calendar very well, but I have to, I have to make time for it when they come in. Yeah. The first week of every month, Kevin does a cover that he makes in his, in his home of another artist. The second week of every month, Kevin does a rendition of one of his catalog songs. And they're kind of acoustic-ish with sprinkles that Kevin's been getting a lot better over the years of working with me and, and also working with Jesse of kind of like 
doing light, just call it light production ultimately, right, Jesse? What I would call it is he's becoming a bedroom producer. Kevin is a young bedroom pop artist like everyone else <laughs> I work with now. He's prettying them up. They're really good. It's not like they're just acoustic versions that he like recorded and spits them out. They're really thought out. He puts a lot of time into them. And so those are the first two weeks of every month. The third is like a video address and Q&A. And the fourth is like an Instagram private live stream. And then we're like offering merch discounts or vinyl or stuff like that. And I think, I mean, it's fascinating to me. I think we're I don't think we're ever going to get rid of this. I think this is the new model oh, yeah. for Kevin Fine. You know, I think like in the future, if when God willing, there's touring again, you'll only be able to get pre-sale if you're part of the Patreon. Well, you know, we want to keep adding value, but I love it. I mean, it's really interesting if you have an artist that has a lot of meat on the bones, you know, I, I think it's really tough for bands to do it because one, even if you make a lot of money, you're still splitting it up three to five ways, you know, and that's hard. But for like a kind of like solo singer, songwriter type artist, I think it's awesome. Uh, especially if you have like a longer career and treat it very seriously. Like this is Kevin's job now, you know, right now, like this is what makes sense for him to sink the most of his time into outside of making his next record that we're working on. But I, I found it really um, refreshing. It's been really like creative for me. And I, I really like it as a model. And I know some people like complain about the fees Patreon take, but I think they're very modest considering how much value we've yeah. gotten without having that much work. It, you know, like the setup is so easy. It's crazy. But I mean, it is that thing that everybody complains about fees. But I, I mean, I think the biggest challenge with this, uh, and you know, much like what we just discussed with YouTube, is that artists have little imagination of how to do this. And like, you know, I've been seeing a few things like there's the artist, you know, Spirit Box. Yeah. I just looked at their Patreon that they started and they're doing some interesting things. And I think like, it is funny if this has brought out people finally learning how to do this a little bit better. But like traditionally, there's a reason why, like while I think musicians have way more potential to have huge Patreons, there's a reason podcasters are pretty much the top of it. Yeah, and that's a great model for that. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> like I think of what I pay for and I'm sure what you pay for is I pay for that exclusive episode because I don't want yep. to live without it. A bonus episode, yep. I should say I didn't talk about it before, but like I have this podcast coming out that I work on called Killed by Desk, where we interview people who are no longer making their living from a band and they now have a day job about their day job. And we talk to their coworkers and it's very funny, but also informative. But we're doing that model along with a merch model because we have such amazing merch for it. And it works, but like there has been this thing that since musicians, one, you know, their content speaks so much of them. You know, you put out a song, that song lives forever. It's a part of your body of work. It's, you can, a lot of people are very precious about that and then two a lot of for a lot of musicians it doesn't give a lot of value to just shit out a remix or a thing like that for their fans so it's been very hard to find what it is but what you've done with kevin really really seems like it's been like an incredibly cool thing for his audience that they really like yeah and it's invigorating and his audience loves it i mean he's the type of artist that it fits so well for too right like it's very emotionally connected to you you've probably grown up with him right maybe you started listening to kevin 16 and now you're 32 or something right whatever and it's like and you probably have a little more money to spare right because i mean coronavirus uh, not <laughs> included because you're like a real human with a real dream. yeah it's really nice and I, as a as a podcast listener i really appreciate it too i would pay for more of them i pay for a couple like podcast memberships that aren't through patreon but there's always that you've talked about this a lot over time but like you know it goes back to that like a thousand true fans thing obviously it's like there's always some that are the extra fans and i think for a long time before the last few years, people were kind of asking for extra money with, without really giving audience much in return, I, I think. But I think recently, as more like younger people have become like the podcasters that are popular or the artists that are popular, like they have kind of changed up that model and are giving more of what they would want. And yeah, I think it's a great model if you're, if you're willing to do it well. Like the, the one thing with Kevin's to me was just that like, we have to be so consistent. We have to have great branding. We need to be overly friendly. Every There's a discord for the Patreon and like at the I end of every that. month I go in there. I go in there at the end of every month and I'm like, how did we do this month? Anything we could do better? Anything thing you'd like to see right like i'm it's very important i mean it is kevin's true income right now you know so it's like we want to do the best job possible and i am very interested in feedback and changing adjusting all of it you know and it's a really awesome community so it hasn't felt like terrible either it's not like going and reading a yelp review you know yeah and i think as with everything else people will figure out that am i missing anything 
Is there any other way you would have done this? I need to know your questions and what no one else is telling you, since I want to answer them, so leave them in the comments, since I answer every comment in every post. I hope you liked this video, and if you did, please like, subscribe, and get notified. And I'm going to be breaking down the concepts in this video along with how to promote your music and how to make songs you're happy with in the future. I have a Facebook group linked below that is only helpful information. No playlist or con artists, only artists having helpful discussions allowed. If you want to learn more about me, work on a record with me, or check out any of my books, podcasts, or anything else I do, go to jessecannon.com or at jessecannon on all the socials. One last thing, there's two playlists here. One is on how to grow your fan base from 0 to 10,000 fans, and the other is on how you promote your music with Spotify. Or you can hit the subscribe button below, and stay tuned as I have tons of tips for musicians.